நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் ப்ராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த டாமல் வீடியோ ஆஃப் ரெனோண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி த லிங்க் ஆஃப் ஒரிஜினல் வெர்ஷன் ஆஃப் டாமல் வீடியோஸ் கிவன் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் பாக்ஸ் ப்ளீஸ் செக் இட் அவுட் திஸ் இஸ் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் தீபா அண்ட் ஐ ஆம் ப்ரெசென்டிங் யூ த இங்கிலீஷ் வெர்ஷன் ஆஃப் த டாமல் வீடியோ In our last video, I explained about the effects of Mars in 12 different houses for native of Aries Ascendant. In this video, I am going to explain about effects of Mars in different houses for the native of Taurus Ascendant. For the native of Taurus Ascendant, Mars is the house lord of 7th and 12th house. Mars is not the house lord of any auspicious house. for the native of taurus ascendant if only mars resides in upajaya sthanas such as 3rd or 6th house or 10th house or 11th house in a friendly relationship it is considered to be good when mars resides in ascendant house it is never considered to be good Since Mars is a malefic planet when it resides in the house of a benefic it will deliver benefits only after spoiling the house where it resides usually when Mars resides in the ascendant house the native will be an angry person an impulsive person however since this is the house of a benefic which is venus there will not be much worse effects when this mars has got the connection of a waxing moon or full moon or jupiter it is auspicious however for the native of taurus ascendant when mars resides in the house of taurus that is ascendant house itself it will deliver the characteristics of mars to the native since mars aspects from the house of a benefic the 7th house it will strengthen the 7th house and this position will deliver a good spouse in general the malefic should not aspect its own house and if it does so it will make the house pabatwa whether it is mars or saturn it should not aspect its own house but here in this case i change this point because mars when it resides in taurus aspect its own house which is the seventh house from the taurus which is the house of a benefic it resides in the house of venus and it aspects the seventh house therefore it makes the seventh house subatva when mars resides in taurus it will aspect the seventh house which is considered to be good and it will be in the second house to its 12th house when mars resides in venus houses it is good for mars but not for the house of venus the ascendant house will get spoiled because of the presence of mars but for mars it is good here mars resides in the house of a benefic and it gets connected to the 7th house by its 7th aspect and it will deliver benefits when will all the benefits of mars be delivered it will be delivered during its major planetary period or minor planetary period of mars therefore during the major planetary period of mars it will not deliver very bad effects since mars resides in the ascendant house the native consequently will tend to be impulsive angry doing actions without any forethought and will be very sensitive to what goes around the native based on the aspect and conjunction of other planets we have to make further predictions now let me explain the effects of mars in the second house which is gemini this is not considered to be good this is the house of mercury so it is not good for mars and moreover it will be in the 8th house to its own house scorpio 
here mars gets parbatva it is in the 8th house to the 7th house of the ascendant many call this as manglik dosha this dosha is intense here it is not considered to be good when mars resides in second house the lord of 7th house resides in the 8th house to its own house and it resides in the second house to the ascendant consequently this will deliver delayed marriage what will be the antidote for mars residing in second house to the ascendant house if mars is subatwa it is considered to be good it is okay if mars resides in the second house provided it has no connection with saturn or rahu if it has connection with the natural malefic like saturn or rahu it will deliver very worse effects now let me explain the effects of mars in third house that is house of cancer where mars gets debilitated it is good when mars gets debilitated in third house for the native of aries ascendant when mars gets debilitated in the house of cancer it means it gets debilitated in the fourth house whereas for the native of taurus ascendant mars gets debilitated in the third house this is a better position than for native of aries ascendant where mars is debilitated in the fourth house though mars gets debilitated it will be in the quadrant house to its own house aries please try to understand this mars is a planet where it will reside in quadrant house to its one of its own house and it will be in the trine house to its another own house though it gets debilitated as per bhavad bhavam when mars gets debilitated in the third house it will be in the quadrant house to its aries house which is 12th house to the ascendant and it will be in the 9th house from scorpio which is the 7th house to the ascendant when mars resides in one of the upajaya sthanas such as third house or sixth house or 10th house or 11th house it will deliver benefits the only point that you have to remember is in any case mars should not reside in punarpusam that is punarvasu nakshatra why should it not reside in punarpusam that is punarvasu nakshatra because the lord of the punarpusam that is punarvasu nakshatra is the 8th house lord to the ascendant for the native of aries ascendant i mention the star lord of mars regarding the 8th house lord to the ascendant there are three stars that reside in cancer punarpusam pusam and ailyam that is punarvasu pushya and ashlesha saturn is the lord of pusam that is pushya nakshatra and mercury is the lord of ailyam that is ashlesha nakshatra and jupiter is the lord of punarpusam that is punarvasu nakshatra if mars resides in pusam that is pushya nakshatra whose house lord is saturn which is lord of 9th house and 10th house to the native of taurus ascendant which is raja yoga adipati mars will deliver certain benefits if star is ailyam that is ashlesha whose house lord is mercury which is lord of 2nd and 5th house for the native of taurus ascendant it is good i have mentioned the subtlety of the 3rd and 11th house in many of my videos why are the 3rd house 6th house 10th house and 11th houses are considered to be good when the planets are in friendly relationship because based on the nakshatra lord the planets will deliver certain benefits having said all these when mars gets debilitated in the third house it is not considered to be a great shortcoming 
when mars resides in the third house it will invoke karaho bhavanasti at the beginning of the video itself i mentioned that if mars is spoiled then brother is spoiled it doesn't mean that nato will be in a bad situation mars signifies brothers as jiva karaka and therefore when it gets spoiled it definitely affect the status of the brother you have to understand what will happen when a planet becomes weak or strong in one's natal chart mars signifies the jiva karaka as brother especially the younger brothers mars is the planet that signifies the younger sibling such as younger brother or younger sister you have to make further predictions based on other factors therefore mars will not deliver such worse effects when it resides in the third house being debilitated based on nakshatra lord when mars resides in pusam that is pushyami or ailyam that is ashlesha nakshatra it will deliver certain benefits Mm, in case mars here has got connection of jupiter or waxing moon or venus it will deliver immeasurable benefits to the native of taurus ascendant during its major planetary period or minor planetary period this is the place where mars can deliver benefits when mars is debilitated here and it has got connection of jupiter let us say aspect of jupiter or conjunction of jupiter or connection of venus or the connection of waxing moon or when it is in connection with lone mercury mars will become subhatva and it will deliver benefits through its domain to the native there will be definitely some benefits to the native during the major planetary period or minor planetary period of mars Now let me explain the effects of Mars in fourth house, which is Leo. A malefic resides in the fourth house, the house of Leo. When Mars resides in the fourth house, it loses its directional strength, that is Digbala. Though Mars loses its Digbala in the fourth house, it has great benefits. It is very auspicious. It will not deliver worse effects. Now let me explain the effects of Mars in the fifth house. that is virgo mars should not reside in the fifth house this is a house whose house lord is a dead enemy to mars when mars resides in fifth house it will be in the sixth house to its aries house and it will be in the 11th house to the scorpio house mars will not deliver any great benefits when it resides in virgo in the fifth house to the ascendant house the only antidote is subhatva what will happen when mars resides in the fifth house it will affect the children and it will affect the luck factor during its major planetary period to sum up mars will not deliver any great benefits when it resides in the fifth house for the native of taurus ascendant Now let me explain the effects of Mars in sixth house, which is Libra. This is another own house of the ascendant Lord Venus. Here Mars resides in the house of a benefic. When Mars resides in the house of a benefic, for the native of Taurus ascendant, it will aspect the twelfth house to the ascendant, and it gets connection to the twelfth house. this will deliver certain level of benefits to sum up when mars resides in the 6th house the house of a benefic it will deliver certain benefits now let me explain the effects of mars in the 7th house which is scorpio what does mars deliver here as 7th house lord considering this in a chart of a male the wife will be a strong one but a very angry person and if anything goes wrong she will not hesitate to beat her husband in case the husband's ascendant lord is weak then the wife will be ruling the family 
So you have to make predictions very keenly when Mars resides in the seventh house. Here Mars gets Tanabala, so it indicates the wife is very strong. Mars is in its own house status here. It is Ruchaka Yoga. For the native of Taurus ascendant, when Mars is in its own house status, in the quadrant house, seventh house to the ascendant house, it attains Ruchaka Yoga. It says that the wife is a very strong person. In case if the ascendant lord is weak in husband's natal chart, then he will be beaten by the wife black and blue. Or the wife will be earning and taking care of the family and the husband will do nothing. He will not earn bread. He will be just idle and enjoy the money earned by the wife. This is the way you have to mash the karaka and bhava. Well, let us take another situation. The native is Taurus Ascendant and the Ascendant Lord Venus is exalted. And Mars is in the seventh house. What will happen? Then the wife will be under the control of the husband. It means the husband is saving the wife, earning the bread and supporting the family. Let us take another situation. Mars is in its own house status in Scorpio in the seventh house to the ascendant and the ascendant lord or Venus is debilitated. How will you make predictions? It means native is idle, he does nothing and he is living with the support of his wife who is earning for the family. In case Venus gets its debilitation cancelled, then the predictions will be completely different. It means the native will be in a top position. This is how you have to match the Karaka of the planet, Bhava of the planet by gauging the strength of the planet and you have to make the final predictions. When Mars gets its own house status in the seventh house, it is good in a certain way. It delivers a strong wife, angry wife and you can make further predictions if you are extending the Karaka of Mars. If Mars is Subhatva here, then it is considered to be very auspicious. It means the wife will be a very, very understanding person. There will be a greater understanding and intimacy between the couple. For any person whose seventh house is very strong, then person is considered to be very, very fortunate. The husband will be longing to go to the house and meet his wife. Yesterday, a funny incident happened that I would like to narrate. It was around 7 o'clock uh, when I got a call from a guy from his office with whom I am very well acquainted. I asked the guy why he stays in the office till 7 p.m. I asked the guy why he was staying in the office till 7 p.m. and he was not going home maybe around 5.30 p.m., rather staying until 7 p.m. in the office. The guy replied with laughter that he was really afraid to go home. He also added that he prefers to stay in the office even for extra hours for which he was paid, rather than going home and getting reprimanded by his wife. And he also added he does not want to spoil his peaceful mind by going home. These sorts of effects will be delivered by Mars when it is Pabatwa in the 7th house. When the 7th house lord is very strong, it means that the spouse, the wife is very strong. The Pabatwa and Subatwa will decide further predictions. Here, Ruchaka Yoga does not have much to play in. We will talk about this later in another video. Now let me explain the effects of Mars in the 8th house which is Sagittarius. When Mars resides in the 8th house to the ascendant house, it resides in the house of Jupiter. So here there is no Manglik Dosha. In case in the 8th house Mars is in connection with Saturn or Rahu, it will spoil the family. When Mars resides in the 8th house that is in Sagittarius, 
it will aspect the second house and third house when mars is in connection with saturn and aspects the second house and third house it will deliver very very worse effects when it is in conjunction with sun it will have 50% bad effects many tamil astrological poems dictate that when mars is in conjunction with sun the woman will become a widow at a very early age some fools has written these sorts of poems and please don't believe all these most of these poems are just rubbish sun is 50% benefic and 50% malefic and mars is 25% benefic and 75% malefic when these two planets are in conjunction in the 8th house and they aspect the second house which is house of family definitely there will be some bad effects but when will all these effects be delivered it will be delivered during major planetary period of sun and minor planetary period of mars or major planetary period of mars and minor planetary period of sun suppose if a girl is born in the nakshatra of rahu such as tiruvadirai swati or sadayam that is ardra swati or sadabesha then these astrological poems does not have any importance at all because mars or sun dasha will never happen many poems are really like garbage and please don't consider these points while making predictions indeed there are certain poems that explain the natal charts of an individual person not a generic one you don't need to listen to those poems which are really unnecessary when mars is alone in the 8th house it will not deliver such worse effects what will be the shortcoming when mars resides in the 8th house for the native of taurus ascendant the 7th house lord resides in the 8th house so it will deliver a delayed marriage even though marriage is delayed it will definitely deliver a good spouse because lord of 7th house resides in the house of a natural benefic jupiter and if this is further aspected by venus it will deliver such a great wife it will give delayed marriage but a very good spouse to the native it will give a good spouse and the life will be good but mars should not be pabatwa now let me explain the effect of mars in capricorn mars gets exalted in the 9th house i often say that a malefic planet should not be exalted in the 9th house it is not good when mars gets exalted in the trine house what will happen when mars gets exalted in the 9th house it will spoil the status of the father what will happen when 75% malefic planet reside in the 9th house it means there is no father or even if the father exists he will not behave like a good father you have to make further predictions based on status of saturn which is 9th house lord for the native of taurus ascendant and status of sun which is the natural significator of the father we have already explained how you can predict by giving 100 points in our earlier videos i explained to you with 100 or 120 marks like giving 33.3 points each or 40 points each so if the sun is in good status please give 33.3 points if the status of saturn is good please give 33.3 points and based on 9th house give 33.3 points you have to check all these factors to make final predictions so here in the 9th house mars is exalted as a next step if you want to know whether the father exists or not or his status you have to check the status of saturn the status of sun 
imagines that saturn is debilitated or it is in connection with rahu it is highly pabatva then subtract 33.3 marks as a next step please check the status of the sun and also the leo house if you find that both sun and leo house are spoiled then you can definitely come to a conclusion when the child is born the father did not exist the child would have never seen the face of its father the client will definitely nod yes to your prediction or at least they will say when the child was 2 years old its parents got divorced and its father never returned to see the face of the child the father does not even know whether the child exists or not this is how you have to predict in vedic astrology imagine mars is exalted in the 9th house and saturn is pabatva or debilitated or it is in 6th or 8th or uh, 12th house from its capricorn house and leo house is also spoiled and let us imagine rahu resides in leo and in addition to this let us imagine sun is debilitated or pabatva definitely the child will not have a father when it is born you can make further predictions about whether the father exists somewhere or not by considering other planetary combinations the father would have gone somewhere got separated from his wife around 2 or 3 years after the child was born and this child's mother would have got married next and will be living with the second husband these sorts of effects will be delivered when all the points that i explained are met it gains tanabala it becomes very strong and it will deliver a very good wife a very strong wife and it will do its house effects very strongly let me explain the effects of mars in the 10th house which is aquarius it delivers enormous benefits mars attains digbala in the 10th house for the native of taurus ascendant though this is saturn's own house it mars will deliver enormous benefits since it has got digbala it is considered to be very auspicious when malefics attain digbala rather than getting exalted or getting their own house status it is okay even to be mars getting debilitated in 10th house and it should never be pabatva when mars is placed in the 10th house in a natal chart it is called dasama angaraka if it has connection of a benefic then it delivers benefits therefore when sun or mars gets digbala in the 10th house then definitely it will deliver immense benefits to sum up when mars resides in 10th house it will deliver great benefits to the native now let me explain the effects of mars in the 11th house which is pisces this is such a great position for the native of taurus ascendant because mars resides in the house of jupiter and it is near its directional strength house it is highly subhatva as well when mars resides in the 11th house it will be in the 6th house to the 7th house and it will be in the 12th house to the 12th house that is aries however when mars resides in house of pisces it gets a certain level of sthanabala and instead of delivering a beating wife it will deliver an embracing wife to the native to the husband when a malefic being the lord of an important sthana is in the 6th house to that particular house it will deliver the house effects differently here it will deliver a very kind wife rather than an angry wife this will definitely deliver a very good wife to the native now comes the point of 11th house i already explained about the third house i told even mars when debilitated in the third house is considered to be good 
the same way when mars resides in the 11th house it is considered to be good there are three stars that reside in pisces such as puratadi uttaratadi and revati that is purva bhadra uttara bhadra and revati whose planet lords are jupiter saturn and mercury respectively when mars resides in uttaratadi whose star lord is saturn or revati whose star lord is mercury it will deliver benefits based on its nakshatra lord there are four padas of uttaratadi that is uttara bhadra and four padas of revati which sums up to totally eight padas if mars reside either in nakshatra of raja yoga dipati which is saturn or in the star of mercury who is the lord of second and fifth house mars will deliver great benefits here based on nakshatra lord mars will deliver immense benefits now let me explain the effects of mars in the 12th house which is aries here mars gets its own house status here mars will affect the 12th house effects if mars which is a malefic 75% malefic resides in the 12th house it will deliver the bad house effects of the 12th house it means the native will definitely go to prison it means the native will go to jail and not abroad if mars is subhatva here then all the predictions will be different this is the place where many astrologers or the students get confused and make incorrect predictions recently i came across a comment i believe which is for premium video i'm not sure whether it is the comment of a premium video or a general video on youtube one of my subscribers mentioned that an astrologer predicted for him that he will definitely go abroad since rahu is in the 8th house and only later did he realize why he did not go abroad this is the place where you have to consider the pabatva and subhatva of the house when mars resides in the 12th house what will happen it will deliver the bad house effects of the 12th house in an increased manner if mars resides in the 12th house and saturn also aspects the 12th house definitely person will go to jail when will he go to jail during the major planetary period of mars or minor planetary period of mars this will happen what else do you have to predict what else do you have to look for to make complete predictions the ascendant lord should be weak in addition to this what does the 12th house signify it makes a person live in a confined area it will grab the freedom from the native it will make the native to be aloof from everything in the situation the 12th house lord has got a good sthanabala and is pabatva these are the worst effects that will be delivered by the 12th house lord when it resides in 12th house with pabatva and without any benefic connection what will happen when there is a connection of natural benefic all these predictions will turn out differently imagine that from the 8th house that is sagittarius jupiter aspects the 12th house which is aries the native will not go to jail rather he will go abroad this is how you have to check or distinguish between the differences in predictions based on pabatva and subhatva you will learn the knack of matching all the points together and you can make the best predictions what will happen when mars resides in the 12th house in aries and subhatva it will deliver all the good house effects of the 12th house such as going abroad if mars resides in the 12th house without any benefic connection it will deliver all the bad house effects of the 12th house such as imprisonment in jail 
and it will let the native to be a miser. Somebody asked me how to find out if a person is miser or not. The twelfth house signifies it. If the twelfth house is Subhatva, then the person will not hesitate to give to charity and will be ready to donate, etc. If the twelfth house is Pabhatva, then the person will not be ready to spend and it also means that he is not earning much. If only you have some income, you will be in a position to donate to everybody. If there is no income, consequently, a person will become a miser. What will happen when Saturn resides in 12th house? It will aspect the second house to the ascendant house. It will spoil the income of the native and it spoils the 12th house as well. Consequently, the native will be a miser. If Saturn resides in the 12th house, the person will be a miser. I saw one question in Aditya Guruji's astrology group. I couldn't explain it at that time, but I will make use of this opportunity to explain that question, to answer to that question. When you understand the karaka of the planet and the bhava, you can make the best predictions. The 12th house signifies the capability of spending. It is the house of expenses. The very magnanimous one definitely will spend a lot, will do a lot of expenses. Who is the donator? The one who donates is a donator. Who can donate? The one who possesses something can donate something to others. Whether you grab it from another man's pocket or whether you take it out of your pocket, you should have the ability to donate. The house of expenses, the house that indicates that something goes away from a person is signified by the 12th house. The 12th house signifies that a person becomes aloof or something goes away from you or the money goes away from your pocket or some property goes away from you. You are giving something to others. The Subhatva planets will help the native to do all these. What is the opposite effect of something going away from you? The opposite effect is you will not lose anything, you will hold everything. If there is a person who has some income but still hesitates to spend, who thinks a lot before spending, then the 12th house will be Pabhatva. It is good when Mars resides in Aries with Subhatva. If Mars is in Pabhatva in the 12th house, it will spoil the 12th house. It will increase the bad house effects of the 12th house and it will deliver such bad effects to the native. It will destroy the good house effects of the 12th house. If Mars resides in 12th house in one's natal chart, please don't go to the share market for investments. Mars is alone in 8th or 12th house then it is not advisable to invest in the share market. You can't expect any unexpected gains. I always say that the 8th and 12th house indicates the share market. The share market is not a gradual manner of income. It is something where gains are earned suddenly. So please don't invest in the share market if 8th and 12th houses are Pabhatva. Well, this is all about the effects of Mars in 12 different houses for the native of Taurus Ascendant. In our next video, let me explain the effects of Mars in 12 different houses for the native of Gemini Ascendant. Well, this is question time. When the Lord of 7th house is in the 6th house to its own house, which is 7th house, what sort of spouse it will deliver? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. In the description box, there is a playlist link of all the English videos so far published. And please keep writing your feedback to astro.write2us at gmail.com. Thank you.